In today's video, Wiz will take on the personality of one Rowdy Seymour, host of TV Trash, a review show dedicated to some of the worst shows on TV. Today's review will be on The Nut Shack. If you're Filipino, if you've seen the show, or you simply like to watch reviews of bad TV shows, you've entered the Tribute Zone. TV trash. You know, I've been getting a lot of requests to review what people like to call ghetto shows. I've already done a review of the Boondocks before, but other shows that fall under this category are shows like Barbershop the Sitcom, the Friday's Animated Series, the Soldier Boy Animated Series, and even the Slim Shady Show. Believe me, we'll get to that show eventually in another review, but today we're going to be looking at The Nut Shack. This is one of those shows that's so bad it actually lasted only a couple episodes. The Nut Shack was created by amateur Filipino comedian Raymond Lopez. The show lasted two seasons with the first season being aired in 2007 and a delayed season airing in 2011. Also it was aired on Mix TV, which sad to say is a station I actually never got. So let that sink in for a little bit. Brickleberry is on Comedy Central, Mr. Pickles is on Adult Swim, and this show was featured on a network I never even had. This should be fantastic. So, this is The Nut Shack. We begin with a rap theme song, which wouldn't be too bad if you could actually understand what the frack the guy was singing. Feels from the soul, jacks from the P.I. Whole on the whole rap so big I. We begin properly with Phil and his uncle Dick. Oh gee, guess why they call him that? Hey, you're going down on my nuts? What? <laughs> oh. As they're playing a game of Street Fighter Star Wars Edition. Which saying that out loud, if that hasn't been made already, that needs to be a thing. As they discuss, Phil's cousin Jack is moving into their neighborhood in San Diego. While that's going on, Jack is on an airplane and her her, he's stuck between two fat people. Excuse me, sir, is that a... Pet in your bag? Uh, Holy crap, what is that? Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Jar Jar Binks of this series. Horat, Jack's monkey robot creation. I would ask how he's able to speak, but I just assume Jack put a voice box in his circuitry or something. A stewardess walks by and notices that Jack snuck an animal on board, and oh, guess what he does? He's a monkey, so he flings his own crap. herp a derp a derp it's all ended when Jack gets body slammed by the fat guy who was sitting next to him earlier. Jack arrives at the apartment and we're introduced to the second worst character of this show, which is an accomplishment. This is Dwayne, the landlord. He's the token white guy. Now this could be a good spoof on actual sitcoms having the obligatory character of another race. Since everyone on this show is Filipino, we have the token white character. But he barely does anything aside from just wanting to hang out with our main characters. I'm just lonely. <laughs> And he's always hungry. And hungry. And I like you guys. After they get rid of Dwayne, Phil takes Jack around the town to introduce him to the other stereotypes. Oh wait, did I say stereotypes? I meant our characters. Like these stoners, this Arabian porn shop owner, this homeless man, this gay guy who dresses like a woman. Wow, way to go, show. Be double offensive. You have a gay stereotype who's also a trans stereotype. Killing two birds with one stone. That's really good, show. And now the token female character, Cheetah, who Jack quickly falls in love with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that? <laughs> What's the joke? They keep the camera zoomed in like it was something not sexual, but then they zoom out and it is something sexual. In the words of Mark Hamill's Joker, if you have to explain the joke, there is no joke. 
Oh, and just to make it even more close-minded, her entire character is she's just one of the guys, but she's a chick. So the only reason the guys want to hang out with her is because she acts just like them. Yeah, because that's not a lazy and contrived reason for these characters to have chemistry. While all this is going on, we get a side plot with Dick meeting Horat, and it really amounts to nothing more than them just smoking weed and Dwayne falling off their balcony. Oh, ha ha, very funny. It just sent your landlord falling several feet to his death while you were high, no less. That's gonna make you look really good in court. And the episode ends with Jack talking about how happy he'll be there, Horat humps his leg, and Phil talks to his own dick. No, I did not make that up. So you're probably wondering, with a pilot episode like that, how did the rest of the show fare up with the next 15 episodes? Well, even though the first season was essentially just episodes of Phil and Jack getting into gang-related incidents, all the while bad sex and drug jokes ensue, the second season did two things slightly right. First off, they put subtitles under Horat so you can finally understand what the little bastard is saying. And secondly, they had more interesting concepts for episodes, like the crew becoming superheroes or action movie stars. Sadly though, no matter what, this show sucks! The animation looks like something off of a 2005 Newgrounds video, the characters are all unhealthy mixtures of character tropes and racial stereotypes, and the humor is on par with the worst of Family Guy and South Park. This is definitely one of those shows when they say, oh, it's for adults only, it really feels like a stretch. So while still not as bad as shows like Brickleberry or Mr. Pickles, The Nut Shack is definitely a show I do not recommend. And that's putting it lightly. Now if you need me, I'm gonna go watch some Buffy the Vampire Slayer to try and wipe my memory of this show. Oh, what even the hell? He didn't even have any of us in this review. Man, frack this! I'm gonna go watch some WWE. Yeah, you do that, Mark. Go watch your WWE. If you need me, guys, I'm gonna go make a video ranting about some Jagoff customer I've had in the past. Tune in next time when Wiz will take on the personality of one Austin Trench, a toy reviewer. Okay, enough of that. Just need to move over. Here we are. Oh, well, great to see that uh, fanboy and Swigga got home. What the hell is this place? Inner Christian? Pop culture whiz? Emo pretentious? Where the hell did they go?